Okay. Three, two. This episode of Getting Table is brought to you by Valhalla Hobby. Use code GT2305 to get 5% off any order over $100. That is GT2305 at ValhallaHobby.com. This is Getting Table. With your hosts, Jason the Bruce. You guy! George the Yang. I hope you're all entertained by my inaptitude. Jason, a.k.a. Major Socks. We've been doing this and talking about various stuff. One of the stuff. Now sit back, relax, and get tabled. Hello, future people, and welcome to episode 122 of Game Table with your host, The Bruce. Hello, folks. We're having a drink today, visibly, and not just pretend in a coffee cup. We have no major socks with us, but we do have George. We have George, and we also have not the Yank, but he is currently off uh, eating dinner as well, so... <laughs> Um, so, today's run format is going to be a little bit different, not just because it's the day before Christmas, but because I'm away from home. Uh, I'm running from a phone, and only a phone. So, George and I are going to tag team this a little bit, uh, because I can't physically see what I'm looking at. I mean, I chose all the articles, so I know what we're talking about, but run sheet-wise, I don't have it in front of me, and I can't look at the images as we go. So George is going to be my eyes, so to speak, and remind me what we're oh, looking you're at. Screwed. I know what the first thing is. <laughs> oh, yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't guide dog for a blind man. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's jump into this. Uh, this thing called the. You will receive or note all the information, especially about recent or important events. And the first thing on the news is uh, Marvel, Marvel Crisis Protocol terrain, specifically for Black Panther. Um, yeah. We've known that this has been coming for a while, but actually seeing the decent photos of it, like actual proper decent photos of it, they are really, really pretty. And, um, and the again, Beast of Bast is probably my favorite amongst them. So again, with Marvel prices, like Marvel, cri pri uh, Marvel, cri Marvel, Marvel pr crisis protocol. Crisis protocol. Good lord, I cannot talk tonight. Um, they've had two two forms of intellectual property to pull from: the original comics, and of course, the Marvel Universe yep. movies. This they've made the choice of going with the movies, which let's be honest, doing the movies with modern CGI and effects. They were able to create some very visually stunning set pieces, and they've translated that very well into the miniatures for the game. Yep, no, that yeah, I would agree with you on that. Um, I mean, you could probably make arguments that they are close, uh, but the way they've been painted specifically makes them look like they belong in the in in the MCU rather than the comics. Oh yeah, for I sure. think you could paint these up to look like comics rather easily. It wouldn't be very hard. Um, what's the name of the other set? There's another one where it's like trees and stuff. Yes, this one is called the Kingdom of Wakanda Terrain Pact, and this has got some some banners, oh, yeah. a tree, and a very blank Black Panther esque uh, six wheel transport vehicle. Yes. So something to throw at people. <laughs> right, yeah, because that's, that's all vehicles are used, used for in Marvel is to throw at people. I'm trying to think. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> no one really has, like, you know, a quote-unquote Batmobile. Well. Well, no, Frank Castle had his, uh, um, his van that, you know, says free Frank candy. Castle has his van, the Fantastic four have a vehicle that they fly because not everybody can fly yeah but that's not a um that, that's a very like uh comic book sci-fi vehicle it's not you know an armored vehicle with utility so yeah um 
Again, I think these are great looking sets, though. No, that they are very pretty. Um, like I said, that the the, um, the the beasts of bust or whatever it's called. Yeah, the, that one is my favorite. I think I'm getting the name wrong, but the first one that we were looking at. It's just called Icons of Bast. Icons of Bast. Thank you. Yes. So, yeah, um, both are available for pre-order. Um, I think the Bast one looks looks the best of the two. I mean, the, the vehicle yeah. is very specific. The other stuff, you know, you could sub in from virtually any other game train set whatever but this this is very um mm. specific for the intellectual property yeah i mean the the trees in the other set are very specifically african for trees mm -hmm. like they're not really something that you would find in europe or, or america but i mean at the same time trees are trees really it doesn't really matter yeah um i doubt that anybody's going to buy this specifically for the trees although the trees are very pretty yeah, they're going to get it for the vehicle, which, you know, uh, they, they package that intentionally of, if you want this vehicle, you have to get all this other stuff, too. I think that the issue with if you're going to play the game and the table is going to be in Wakanda, you can't really mix and match as much as you could with everything else. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, New York is just a city, and there's enough of New York that looks different that you can probably pull from any buildings you want. Um, but Wakanda is such a specific fictional place that you can't really get away with doing the same thing. Do you know how uh, not used to doing this I am, Bruce? <coughs> Explain the problem for us, George. I forgot to switch the view. Ah, oh, well done. So, now, hey. So, on screen now, George is now showing us the Legions of Bust. So, the Icons of Bust. Yes, and now I need to figure out why you're not showing up. <laughs> um, oh, what? I tested this earlier, I swear. It probably means there we go. it's not seeing Discord again. No, it's, you're going to have to no, edit this out. Nope, I got this. It's fine. I was able to make the changes on the fly. You're there. Yep. So, yeah, here's the icons of, uh, of Bast... Uh, do, do, do. So, uh, and then we'll jump over to, there we go. There's the terrain. Uh, there's the vehicle we were talking about. And of course the tree. So, uh, my apologies for that folks. Yeah. So, um, yeah, the, the icons of bass, definitely, definitely next, the best. Next we got some star Wars. I, I believe it's the fearless and the, is it fearless and the initiative inventive It's something like that inventive. Yes. Which is Luke Skywalker breaking into, um, um no, it's a uh, the giant slug guy. It's a uh, it's Leia breaking in. Well, he just walked in. She broke into. Well, yes. So, uh, there is uh, Luke and Leia uh, in their respective Return of the Jedi get-ups. and then uh, Lando and R two D two as a bar. Which is always fun. It just shows how versatile an astromech can be. <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, it's not really... Uh, this is something that Star Wars fans are going to have to have because it completes the set. I don't think it's the most exciting of sets personally. I If I wanted to have a, a layer model on the table... I, d or, or I a, do. Um, I do because... Galrissian on the table... I would want him to look like him. I feel like this is when Lando's actually doing something. If you look at all... That the, is true. If you look at all the other times Lando was doing stuff, he's pushing buttons on his little arm thing, saying, you changed the deal. Like, he he was acting like a little, you know, a little bitch for a little, back, lack of better words. This one, like, you know, he's dressed up as a yeah. bounty hunter, infiltrating Jabba's palace, to save Luke. Like, he's doing something here. So. Um, True. And he's not wearing Han's clothes. That is that is a very good point. <laughs> or flying Han's ship. 
You could argue it's still his show. Uh, and then like, finally from... <laughs> well, he's the one that bit it. Um, and then finally we have the Darth Vader box set, which is Fear and something, but... Fear and Dead Men Squad Pack. Oh, that's yeah, that's right. It just acknowledges what the clones are. They are dead men. <laughs> well, you could argue though that since these are return looking Jedi's, are they actually clones at this point still? No, they wouldn't. Well, so, some of them will be, some of them won't be. Exactly. So, um, we've got the we got the one. I do like Darth Vader. Darth Vader looks really good. I'm not a fan of the the the, the cloak in this one. I think there's another pose where he had this cloak, and it was like, I wasn't a fan of that. Yes, it's very dynamic. Um, I'm digging the Stormtrooper with, like, the, the shoulder pad from the, you know, like yep. you saw in Tatooine in the desert. Um, I, I think that's something they missed out a lot on the Stormtroopers. I've got the uh, the other two poses up of, you know, the accessories for um, functionality, I think is the best way to put it. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Wait, a few months back, we had that diorama set where it was Darth Vader versus Luke Skywalker, mm -hmm. which, I mean, the models in it were very pretty, but the problem with it, of course, is that it was a very expensive way to buy two models. Um, yeah. So it's good that we now have options for Luke and Darth. Absolutely, yeah. Um, let's see, and, and these are the same scale as... Marvel Crisis Protocol, which is 48? 40 mil. 40 mil. So 40 mil, uh, yep. 50 bucks, four minis. So I'm assuming the other kit was the same price. So you're, you're looking about, you know, 12 50 a mini, you know, which, you know, they're that biggish since, you know, they're larger. So De decent enough price. Um, they're not. Ex I know that there is a percentage of the audience out there that always goes on about how expensive this game is, and it's not really. It's the same. It's exactly the same pricing we at the end of the day that Games Workshop has. Well, I, now granted, some Games Workshop boxes are more better value than others, but I, I was going to argue. At least with, you know uh, what you're getting into. This is way better than Games Workshop because with the Games Workshop, uh, you know, you got your your Sarcher, your hero, uh, which is a 28 mil scale. Hero, so you're you're looking about yep. that big. They're th 35, 40 bucks now. So, yeah. you know, th th this is I think this is an exceptional deal. The the only problem I have with um, a lot of Star Wars stuff that people seem to like onto and grab onto and want, it's just it's so limited as far as the intellectual property. Like, you don't see the 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 same. Yeah, because you're gonna need to watch in the universe. Yeah. 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 So, uh, whereas with with forty k, you can do whatever you want. Yeah, like in the universe. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, if you were to pull in something to expand the game and help it out, you're going to have people say, "But that wasn't in the books or the movies." Some people will still do it. I mean, people do that with. It's a little easier with Marvel because there's a lot more in Marvel and there's a lot more in canon alternate universes. Where Star Wars doesn't really have that. Yeah. I'm now joined by Not the Yank. Hello, future people. I've taught him well. Um, Damn. Looking at the... Show him the two boxes we're discussing. Uh, I have to... Oh, I'm just curious if he has a preference for one or the other. I have to grab this one real quick. Because uh, I already closed the tab. Alright, so... We got a couple box sets here, Sam. We got. Ooh, let me jump on that. So we got Luke and Leia. This is uh, from Jabba's Palace and uh, Return of the Jedi, and Lando and R two, or Darth Vader and his minions. What, what do you think is the better looking box? Probably the one with Darth Vader. Darth Vader. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. I'm I'm gonna disown you now. Um. <laughs> Um, no, I... Why? Because he likes the bad guy. Everybody likes Vader. No. No, I, I, I don't like Vader and I don't like Luke. I like Han. Yeah, Han Solo's the best guy. Yeah, but Han's not in either of the box sets. 
Well, they need to fix that. I, I want a Han character. I want someone that's going to shoot first. Han is, a piece of, Han is a piece of rock at this point. <laughs> I, I, I want a Han uh, shoots first ability where he gets like an extra a dice roll before anyone else can roll or something like that. That would be fun. All right, next on the All list, right, we've got on. a uh, game found Kickstarter called Dungeons and Lasers. Uh, I think we've talked about them before. Yep. And they're doing caves. We've talked about them a couple of times, yeah. So this is just a preview at this stage. It hasn't gone live, unless okay. that's changed since yesterday. Uh, it is still in preview. Yeah. So what we can look at is very limited at this stage. Like, There's a few companies out there that's done like a cave terrain set for D&D. &D. Um, but this is hard plastic, so I, you get the benefit of hard plastic. I, not I, do, as I, I do have a, uh, a terrain set for caves. Um, I think I have caves. I haven't looked at them for so long. Uh, these are from back in the day when I had my own shop. Um, but it's, it's yep. t tile pieces you put together. Uh, the thing I'm loving here, and I've got it on the screen right now with the little animation... Uh, a follower gift gets a gelatinous cube, estimated width fifty millimeters, yes. clear plastic, empty space inside, so you can stick things in the gelatinous cube. Yay! Which is fun. That and if me... anybody has looked at the unboxings that I'm doing, the miniatures they do are very, very good. Archon Studios makes some really nice stuff. Yes, um, I'm down to the um, the core sets where we got the demonic caves. Rocky Caves, and Bully Oh, there's the more beast. there. Wait, did this go you, You're seeing stuff that I don't see then, because when I, no, the last time I looked at it, it was only that first image. Yeah. So... So I'm going to look forward to looking at this later when it goes live. Yeah, so uh, the Demonic Caves are your typical, you know, it looks uh, kind of... Um, oh, like Diablo uh, in Hell kind of stuff. Uh, then you got your rocky yep. caves, which are a very pointy and your your rocky caves. They'll be like archaic symbols and stuff. Yeah, and then you've got uh, the belly of the beast, which is cave stuff, but it's like you're in the belly of the rancor or whatever. Uh, I'm genuinely really because I have a whole hunt, a whole bunch of this, and I had asked our Patreon at one point if they wanted me to do videos or not, and I haven't I haven't actually delivered on that promise. But I'd like to paint them up to make everything look like it belongs in the Diablo world. Mm. Because everybody else does greys. And adding those browns and stuff would make things more interesting, yeah. I think. So right now I've got up uh, stretch goals. Uh, unlock end endless customization props and discover nine unique sub-themes. Interesting. I, I really like the so I'm guessing this is like... Oh, hold on, Bruce. Yeah. I might have to move the mic a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's too far out. It's falling. I like the gelatinous cube the most because you it's hollow. So you can, like, put custom yeah. things in there instead of, like, I don't know, you have to buy a variety. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a very cool way to do a trap. Uh, going a little further down, uh, add-ons expand with three optional sets featuring minions and bosses. Yep. Uh, here's so I'm imagining that that will be under dark stuff. So yeah. that'll be like dark elves and goblins and stuff, probably. I am guessing that. So, and then uh, going on down, uh, if this is going to be compatible with all other dungeons and laser sets. Yeah, so, and there is quite a bit out there. Uh, assembly without glue. Pre-painted sets will be available. That's new. Yeah, so... I don't recall them having done that before. I may have just not noticed, I've, but I don't recall having done that. There's not a lot of folks that do that. Um, it's very limited. It's... Um, there's that one terrain company. We've looked at them a couple times, and their stuff's just absolutely gorgeous. Uh, and then there's Black Sight Studios. But, I mean, it's like... It's it's a small handful of people that are doing pre-painted terrain. So... And on, uh, on a hard plastic kit, I don't... On a hard plastic kit, like a traditional hard plastic kit, I don't know anybody that does it. Yeah. 
So uh, that'll be really interesting to see what that looks like, even even on the preview, because obviously that's still going to change from the campaign to when it's actually shipped to end and yeah. end customers. But that'll be really interesting interesting to see how they do that. So um, yeah, no, I'm this I'm definitely looking forward to when this goes live. Yeah, this this definitely looks great. Um, yeah. Uh, moving on, uh, TT Combat's uh, Advent Calendar. Yep. So this is traditional, happens every year. Uh, it's gone a little bit longer this year than it has previous years. So um, the first image we have up is... kind of limited last year. Yeah. The, the first one we have up is the, uh, the Luchadore, uh, as uh, TT Combat describes it, uh, a jacked-up oil dude covered in gold. Oh, yes. So, and, and he is fun. So he is just an animated, or not animated, a drawing at this point. It's not an actual mini. Um, so it'll be interesting to it's see a concept, yeah. Yeah, what that mini will look like when it is released. Um, and my message is open. You can see where Socks is at tonight. Yes. Um, on a side note, and I should have mentioned this at the very start. Uh, in fact, I might ask you to, I might ask you to edit this into the start. We have an exclusive reveal for one of these later stories. I'm going to say something later that I will ask you to edit into the start of the show. You're asking a lot of me, there, Bruce. <laughs> It'll be like a five-second clip. Uh, next on the list, we've got some uh, Carnivale terrain uh, of course mdf because that's that is what tt combat does and it keeps opening oh it's going to be open on every single window um dang it uh just close the messages screen oh i do but i have uh, i've got every single window open so the messages came in after i opened the window so they're open on every single screen now oh okay <laughs> you can mute them so um I like this just because it is two tiered. Uh, we've got the um, what's the? Is uh, this the Venetian building? Yeah, it's it's like got like a balcony, oh, and then it's got like a, the little catwalks around the, the top on another level. Yeah, yeah. So it's the Venetian building. Yeah. So I I, I don't know, Sam. Have you, you haven't seen a lot of the MDF trade? What do you what do you think of that? I think it looks <clears throat> pretty good. Um, Look at me Sam, putting him on the Venetian. Do you know what I'm referring to? Do you know what Venice is? Do you know? Do you know Italy? Pasta, spaghetti, and meatballs, or as they say, uh, spaghetti bolognese. Uh, that's um, Venice is the part you'll occasionally see a city, like pictures of a city that's literally sinking into the ocean. That's Venice. And they've got the little narrow boats with the guy with the stick pushing it. Yeah. So that's that's where in the world this, this game is based. Plus, I'm just thoroughly enjoying putting him on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I asked if he knew what it was or not. Right. So next on the list, uh, this is from... I don't know what this is from. This is the... Uh, it's got the uh, wings on the arms, uh, head with uh, teeth, no eyes, big bat ears. I'm guessing it's going to be. I think this is another another rumble slam. No, I, I'm guessing or it's going to be carnival. I'm, I'm going to say it's carnival. Okay. I could. I could hear. Let me just show you real quick. Make people dizzy. Oh yes, this is carnival. It's it's one of the vampires. So it's a, it's a giant bat monster. Uh, I like that. It's a very it's a very good take on a you know vampire type monster. You know, without it being an actual like you know the stereotype or what Hollywood has done. This is this is. Legitimately... I kind of like that they've um, that they've done something like it's evolved not to not just not have eyes that work, but like they just don't have eyes at all. It's not the first time I've seen it, but I like how they've done the head. 
Right, yeah, like, you know, it's working primarily off of echolocation like a bat would and, and doesn't need its eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Next, uh, we have a uh, drop fleet commander. It's that... that it, it looks like that, um, oh, like just after the PHR left. Oh, it's new. It's, it's the new anomaly. It's 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 a new creature from what the anomaly was last year. Okay, gotcha. Um, I am because you notice all the flat triangles and everything on it. Yeah, I am digging the look at that. Um, I'm I'm gonna say this right now. After seeing this one and like the other, you know, the other couple ships like this, we just need this as a faction. The entire faction looks. I'm like kind this. of hoping that it does get branched out. Yes, because this looks too good. For it to be limited to the the couple of ships that it is, we need to have a dreadnought. We need to have you know frigates, cruisers, heavy cruisers, looking like this. Some other weird new faction. Yeah, um, I would say this, um, and more for Louis' case if he comes across this. If you are going to introduce them as a faction, hold that off for second edition, so that you've got something to go with second edition when you do it. Absolutely. What were you going to say? You want something Sam? to go with that when you do it. Hmm? What were you going to say? I said they're adding a new faction. No, we don't know that. It's just a speculation or something no, we they want should them do. To. Yeah, we want them to. More factions means more minis. Yeah, the the ships that I use are like the Parasayer. Yeah, he's a he's a scourgey there, Bruce. Yes, the real heroes of the game. Don't listen to the UCM propaganda machine. The Scourge are the heroes. That's why they're called the Scourge. No, the Hedgehogs are the, are the heroes. Because they're benevolent with all the technology <laughs> and they're wiping out the all the problems. And they're also sure. wiping out humans. Next on the oh, list... They just lie to get what they want. And then... <laughs> Next on the list, uh, flip you around here real quick, Bruce, is uh, another terrain set. Oh, this is the castle. The castle, yeah. George, there's little red icons all over the castle. Look to see what they are. They're ladies with frying pans in their hands. Are they, oh, that didn't do it. Uh, they are ladies with frying pans. If you actually pans. read the description, it, it gets called the, the the pan lady war or something along those lines. Uh, I, don't remember the exact I, I have word. I have no description on it. It just says TT combat December eighteenth at twelve or six a.m. Oh, okay. So, um, this is a great looking set of terrain. If they bundle this up like one of those white boxes I've got hiding up there yeah. that I can't point at, there, right there, I'm touching it now. If they do something like that, this is a great set. Um, castles are one of those. I don't imagine it'll be cheap though. Because that's a very large set. I don't know if if they're if they're displaying the uh, the blue and red pieces at a standard twenty eight mil. That's no bigger than some of the other terrain kits. Um, Curious if those standees are actually going to be something that they release or not. Yeah, but for me, like castles are just one of those terrain sets where, as long as you know, if it's a, a fantasy setting. You cannot go wrong with having a castle set, period. Yeah. There are still people today that talk about the old Citadel castle that you haven't been able to buy for like 20 or 30 years or something. There's still people talking about it. What do you think, Sam? What do you think of castles? I think they're neat. And cold, apparently. Uh, next, we have a very um, uh, edgelord goth dude. So this is for Carnivale as well. This is going to be... This is, I suspect this is going to be one of the larger minis we've had for Carnivale, just looking at it. So I'm, I'm digging the look of... You know, he has the, the, the heraldry to you know, make him look like he is a Knight Templar. But the tabard's yep. not white, it's black. The barding on the horse is black. He's covering his you know, his head with a, a hood. I, I'm guessing he's a um like the the naughty 
Templar who, who does the dirty work behind closed doors. This is a mini that, at least to me at this stage, doesn't really fit with any of the factions. Now, that may change once we get an explanation of who he is. Because um, there's obviously going to be a story that explains why he's dressed that way. Like, maybe he is like the Punisher that comes from from the church or something. I, I don't know. Uh, but if this is a tease of a new faction, that's very interesting as well. So we Ooh, haven't really had a new faction that, that would for be a good. long time. Yeah, because... Um... I have an ass. I don't know if it is a new faction or not. Yeah, that'd be kind of cool. I, I, I do like the concept because regardless, and, and if, if you say, no, that doesn't happen, you're fooling yourself and it doesn't happen, but every single organization has that one group that no one talks about and it's not public knowledge, and they're the ones that get their hands dirty that do all the stuff that you can't publicly acknowledge. And if you're saying that those don't exist, you're wrong. Well, they, I, I've seen the factual documentaries about when they sent that man after Frankenstein and, and the vampires. It does exist, because I've seen the footage. Hugh Jackman was in it. I have, I have a magic mug. Van Helsing. Ter the <laughs> terrible movie, in my opinion. I, could, I hated that movie. <laughs> I enjoyed it, but it was... It wasn't good, but it was fun. Sam doesn't know what we're talking about. <laughs> he wasn't born yet. Also, there's blood on the horse. Uh, that's the barding. Oh, I missed that. Yeah, that's the barding, Sam. Like, um, uh, so the barding is like the horse's armor and shows who the horse belongs to and what organization it's with. But the fact that it's painted to look like blood would not be accidental. No. Not well, drawn. And, and that adds credence to, this is a Knight Templar that gets his hands dirty. And the Templars don't acknowledge. Um, just a thought. I kind of like the idea of, rather than it being a faction of its own, it just being the dark side of the church. Like, just the dark side of the Vatican. Like, the Vatican are not supposed to be the good guys in this. Um, although they obviously portray themselves as that, but it would be cool if we actually got to see what that dark side was. Maybe. Sure. Um, just just as mm. just as a conceptual piece of art, it's stunning. I love it. He could also yeah. be like no, I agree. Anti. Like he used to be one. Oh, knights. that's a good point. He just said uh, uh, he could be a fallen Templar, like. He used to be one, but now he's not because Ooh. because he was naughty. Yeah. And he decided, screw Oh, I like bar. that. Right? Yeah. He's like, I'm going to help. I really I'm like that idea. Them. It's quite literally like he's the Frank Castle of the Knights Templar. I'm not a good guy anymore, but well, I'm still going to hurt the bad guys. Pick. Right? <laughs> so, uh, the next... Uh, I remember seeing this one. This is the uh, Drop Zone Commander. Little UCM tanky. Ah, uh, yes. So this is the this is something that's been requested for a long time, which is an equivalent to the Anomaly, but for Drop Zone Commander. The oh. question I have for this is size, whether it's actually going to be big or whether it's just a regular size thing. I'm hoping that it's kind of like a medium-sized, so that it's like a decent threat. On the table? That's a great question because... So, to me, this this strikes me as a piece of artillery. And when I say a piece of artillery, I'm thinking, yes. you know, a modern, you know, 150 millimeter howitzer, which is approximately close to the size of main battle tanks. Which would be the size of a standard tank in drop zone. Um, yep. If they're doing this, Dave, just... Make an entire faction, introduce it, you know, for zone and fleet. Um, yep, maybe. Ru ruin, ruin people financially because they'll have to buy it. Um, but it looks like that, they will, yes. Yeah, no kidding. I, I'm really digging... So, and I, and I just saw this uh, correlation. So... The way Dave is has you know created and directing the drop universe. Oh, yes, I completely forgot about that. These things have all had stories written about them as well. Oh, they have. 
Um, yeah, Dave has written Dave has written stories on them. Okay, um, but to, to finish my thought, uh, the Drop Universe is starting to give me the real uh, Babylon Five vibe. I could say that because you have like the Shadow and the Vorlon, which are they're the super advanced. Then you have the Membari, which are really advanced but not super advanced. Then you have the Narn and the Centauri, which are not as advanced as the uh, Membari, but more advanced than you know the Earth Alliance, which is the you know UCM. So like I, I'm kind of liking like I could see this being like not as advanced as the Shaltari, not as advanced as the PHR. But more advanced than UCM, you know, kind of thing. Like, yeah. You have a thought there, Sam? Well, I was going to talk about the Rebels. But you are oh yeah, that. the uh, the Resisty. The uh, the the, the oh. folks just getting by. Yeah, we. Like and you know and they're down below the UCM because you know they they're just getting by on what they got. So, um, I. I, it's it's such a simple thing, but I am loving this triangle aesthetic. I am too. It's so different than what anybody else is doing right now, faction wise. It doesn't. So there's as there's aspects of each faction that's just completely different. Yeah. The PHR is your smooth transitional lines. The scourge it, is very biomechanical. The organic. humans are just human, and that's fine. That's, that's fine. The Shaltari are like, uh, look at all of our dots. Uh, we have dots. <laughs> and I consider the humans yeah. human. It's just human. But yeah, the, the schemes you could do with this, like, you know, like, take er, take everything but the triangles and do it like, you know, the you know, lead belcher, kind of metallic, you know, and stuff like that. And then take those triangles and do like... Uh, black with like the actual like proud triangle part being red or some other color combination just like yeah. you know with the mechanics i that would just look really cool yeah um oh. what what was next i want to say it's a rumble slam one it is a rumble slam it looks like naked gandalf with a poncho and uh day devito's <laughs> the penguin without a tuxedo Eating tacos. Uh, I, no, no, no. Sorry, not Danny DeVito. I really like the taco one. It's 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 uh it's Nacho Libre. Eating tacos. <laughs> no, it's Frank from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. We're we're yeah we're watching Always Sunny. So Sam, I've exposed Sam to Always Sunny in Philadelphia. I have a terrible parent. Danny DeVito is a god and should be praised accordingly. So I, I have a funny little uh, add-on here, right? So obviously it's a it's a luchador, right? They've got the masks on, right? Yep. So back in my days when I played World of Warcraft, uh, there's a guy I played with. Uh, his name was Sherwood, and he lived in Mexico City. Right. And I jumped on one oh. night, and you know, we're in our voice chat. His his English is great too, by the way. So. Um, and I was just like, hey, Sherwood, I just watched a documentary on uh, Lucha Libre. And he's like, oh, really? That's cool. Like, wh what was it called? I said, Nacho Libre. And he proceeded to swear at me and leave the voice chat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there'd be a good reason for that. Afterwards, he was just like, that was pretty funny, but you just caught me off guard. And it just it irritated me that you got me like that. So, um I'm not sure about the naked naked Gandalf dude wearing the poncho. Like that's a little. Let, I'll, I'll refresh your memory creepy, here. But I think that's kind of the point. I think the fact that it's creepy is kind of the point, right? And I'm gonna give so many people motion sickness this episode. Flipping the camera around so you can uh, refresh your memory on these. <laughs> uh, next on the list. Uh, for the ninth day of Christmas, we're celebrating a new Halfling game. Is this it, Bruce, or no? <laughs> no, it's wouldn't it be. No. I, 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 so this game, I believe they're calling Half Tilt. We've known that this has been coming for a while again, but this is like they're actually teasing more details on it. So Half Tilt is... But they haven't said this. I am saying this. 
very loosely based on a game that featured within White Dwarf at one point, which was um, uh, they do it at Renaissance fairs where they run at each other with like swords to knock each other off their horses. You would be referring to jousting. Jousting, thank you. Also like that. So it's a jousting is... game, but with halflings. What was that, Sam? I like I I like that the halfling is jousting on a Shetland pony. Well, mm-hmm. yeah, the mm-hmm. halflings can't get on a normal horse. Also, also the halfling in question, I've uh, I've uh, blown up the picture. His uh, yeah. he's got a rooster as his um, uh, uh, her- her- heraldy animal. I don't know why I have such yeah. a problem with that word. Heraldry. Yes. Uh, so I've pulled up the. Uh, I like the fact, and you probably won't notice this, but. I like the fact that these halflings have been designed in a way to make them fit with the halflings they already sell. Here's my shot. I feel like they come from that same world, and that's clever. Well, good point. Cat. Um, Um, What's next? I've I've pulled up the stat card. So it looks like he's got a lance skill of like eight, a leadership of two, and. Six health, zero speed, zero attack, one defense. Cowardly Lancer. And then impeccable, because of the rooster, impeccable yep. timing. After making an initiative check, Sir Cluckington may reduce their strike pool or block pool by one roll or by one to roll one additional initiative dice. So Interesting. Yeah. Uh, so they have actually revealed... Yeah, there's actually been reveal of how a sort of like how this game is going to be work. I, I I love the fact too that they are going head first with both feet into the punning of impeccable timing. Yes, that is fantastic. That is a very TT comment thing to do, though. Uh, oh my goodness! Um, I like the fact that they are going into a game that doesn't really look like anything else on the market yeah for nobody's sure nobody's really doing this it's it's like uh, it's like blood bowl but no you know it's it, you know like blood bowl is a very specific kind of game but then you've got like yeah. you know this is a very specific type of game where the minis will be for this game kind of thing and it's like it's not not anything else it's just this so um um, I mean, you could have you could have the minis and use them in like D and D or something. Yeah. But there's not really a lot of crossover elsewhere. Otherwise, um, the original game I believe was called Full Tilt. I could be wrong on that. Um, I, I as just, in like the one that it's a reference to. I just saw of another use for them. If they ever bring back yeah. Bretonians and they have squires. Yep. Well, they are bringing back. Bretonians. Well, they need the squires, and then we can use the halflings. Sorry, I was really trying to get you to do a spit take there. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've already closed with that tab. Uh, We're on the finished. next one, and that is the uh, upcoming PHR game called, currently called Project Hunter. Now, this is where we're seeing the walker, right? Yes, yes. I will. Here, yeah. I'll flip you around. I just think the hunter looks cool. Uh, it looks very PHR. So, and I, I think that's that's really cool just because of all the the factions we have in the drop universe. The Resist C, UCM, Scourge, PHR, Shaltari. We lost your video there, Bruce. That's all right. Um, I guess I'm the Bruce now. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, Sam is the Bruce right now. Um... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's alright. After we took, oh, now your video's gone. My video's gone. Oh no, there you are. Nope, no, you're all right. It just was not lighting for me. So, but of all those factions for the drop universe, I think doing a like a board game type and focusing on the PHR, I think that is so perfect because there's so much about the PHR that is really cool. You know, they're the only faction that's like, we have tanks, we have grav tanks, we also have walkers. 
Sure, yeah. the, the Shaltari have grav tanks and walkers, but they don't have normal tanks. Like, the, the PHR span all types of technology. Yeah. Uh, JP just commented, a drop universe uh, 4X game would be amazing. Can, can you elaborate, JP? I'm... I, I, I'm wondering if this oh, is the Hunter game that they've been teasing for the last 12 months. Well, yeah, it's but called I Project... don't know if that's what he's referring to or not. Well, it's called Project Hunter on the on the post. Oh, okay. So, um, yeah, JP's saying, think Twilight Imperium. Um, that's, I guess, a question for Sox since that's his favorite board game. I don't know why I still remember that. Um, uh, but needless to say... I haven't played it and I never will. That that walker looks pretty cool. Like, and, and you can go ahead and go into the comments and rip me apart on this, but that walker looks better than anything in BattleTech. Yeah, no, the BattleTech minis are, are, are simple on purpose, though. They're not bad, but they're, they're just simple. So, and then last but not least, uh, to bring us up to date. Ugh. On the 11th day of Christmas, TT Combat revealed to you a reinvented game. Back with a new project that will be yep. invading your house in 2024, TT Combat is revealing Home Raiders. Now, I remember you talking about this a yep. while ago. Yeah. So, so, Shay has turned up at the really, really good point, because this is where I have an exclusive from Louis. Uh, that's, um, first oh. and foremost, but before I go into that... <laughs> Home Raiders is a game that was written by the same person that did Carnivale. Uh, it was originally a Kickstarter, and it's a game that launched, and they, and, and then basically it never went anywhere because he kind of went and did other things and, and then eventually sold the company to TT Combat. Well, sold the IP to TT Combat. Um, so the original game, they're not miniatures. The, the miniatures that you see on the website are to scale, one to one. So they're not miniatures. Uh, and basically the idea is that these are the tiny little people that live secretly in your house and they're fighting over the bookshelf or the kitchen table or wherever you are. Like Literally, you're just playing on George's computer desk and the mouse is part of the terrain. For Which, example. I mean, come on, like that'd be a, that'd be a cool terrain. So, one thing that Louis did say is that the miniatures in the original game he wasn't a big fan of. And to be fair, I can't really blame him for that. They were insanely simple. Uh, I mean, they looked fine for what they were, but they were really stupid simple. Uh, the little puttians were like the small humans, and that's what's been reinvented to these small soldier men that you see on screen. Do, do, do you know what those are, Sam? The, the, say that again, Bruce, the, the L word that I can't say. The Lillip the Lilliputians. The Lilliputian. Have you ever heard of... He won't know what that is. There's no way. Have you ever heard of Gulliver's Travers, Travels? Okay, I, I, I know what movie we need to watch next, so... The next question is, which one, the Ted Dancer or the Jack Black? <laughs> oh, JP just said the exact same thing I did. <laughs> yeah, the Jack Black line. Oh, that's true. Th yeah, this old nerd loves to read. Maybe I'll get him the book there, Shay. T to be fair, um, Gulliver's Travels is phenomenal. Um, it's. I'm surprised that it hasn't been more done with it. It's in. It's in public domain. <sighs> it, it. It's one of those. But I don't know how successful the movie was. Well, they, they've had a couple adaptations. I mean, Jack Black is Jack Black, and I guess that one was fairly well-received. And The Ted Danson one, I I remember watching that one, but I vaguely remember it. And Ted Danson, for me, is... I don't remember it. I grew up watching Cheers, with which starred, uh, you, yeah. know, you know, Ted Danson and Sam Malone. And so, like, there's a special place that I have for Ted Danson. What was the one where he was a doctor? Uh, he took over as Gil Grissom's character in CSI. No, no, the, the, he plays a doctor in Becca. Becca is oh, phenomenal. Okay. 
if you haven't seen Becca, you need to watch it when you're finished the edit. Um, okay, so I have some exclusive news. This will be happening in early 2024. Um, the human faction are being reworked into the soldiers that you see on screen. Uh, the, the old design is basically being put out to pasture, and I can't blame him, to be honest. They do look rather... Yeah. Uh, the goblin that you see in screen is the new version of the goblin that we had. The old goblins were kind of... They're all, like, almost teddy bear-looking. Like, they were really cutesy, and they were fun, um, but they didn't really look goblin-y at all. And he's pushing it towards a more actual goblin aesthetic. So, um, so I'm going to say this real the, quick. That goblin... Yeah, looks like Stitch. I agree, minus, minus the two arms. Mm-hmm. Jetpack looks like a battery. Well, yeah. So, Sam, so yes. the concept of this game is the game surface is an object in your house. So we would sit here, like I'd scooch over, you'd sit here, and my desk would be the gaming table. So if you have a bookshelf with like five shelves and all the books and you have like a book nook and stuff, like that, books. that's the terrain that you play the game on. So it, it, it is a really, on a scale of one to 10, I'll give it a 15 for concept. Yeah. The original game was designed really simply so that it could be played by people of all ages. It was kind of designed deliberately as a game that you could play with kids, as well as have fun with it as an adult. Um, it, it did need some work, hence why it never really went anywhere and why they've taken their time to reinvent it, kind of. But that is the original plan. Lewis wants... This is not confirmed yet, but he wants to do this in hard plastic. Louis. This Louis will be wants, happening early Louis 2024. Wants to, Louis wants to do this in hard plastic. Uh, this is where you're going to lose my camera and you'll have to edit this out for a second because I'm going to read very quickly just to make sure I don't say the wrong thing. I'm the Bruce. What you can't see on the screen right now while Bruce is reading is his lips are moving while he's reading. Oh, you can see me. I thought you couldn't see me. <laughs> no, I, I can't see you. I'm just saying we can't see you. But you're reading, so since you're reading, your lips are going to be moving because, you know, you can't. Never mind. <laughs> okay, so like I said, it will be going early 2024. He wants it to be plastic. This will be going to Kickstarter. We don't have dates yet. Um, the reason it's going to Kickstarter is because this is something that needs to be reinvented and it's basically being done from scratch. It's literally the reason why Kickstarter exists. So so um, I'm, I'm going to say this in, in kind of a hopes that he listens to it. And I understand that he is a, a miniature gaming company like, you know, Drop Zone, Drop Fleet, Carnival, Rumble Slam, you know, where it's... it's this, I think, would be a better board game. Where you have interesting, just, okay. Where you yeah. just have like, you have twelve miniatures, right? And then you have certain things that you can set up on the desk or the bookshelf or whatever, and that becomes part of the terrain for it. And it's just it's an all encompassing kind of thing where you go pick it up, you buy the entire thing, and then there's expansion sets like you would have with God Tear, or something like that. So it's so. In the original game, complexity wise is kind of. You know how I always describe Don't Look Back as it's like halfway between a war game and a board game? Mm -hmm. I think that's what this should be. I would probably say that that's the level of complexity that this will have as well. Right. I, don't, I haven't seen the rules, but know what their complexity they're aiming for is. But but I, th but I, th that's, I, I think that's this is a thing. good direction for that as a, you know, it's not quite the full-on miniature game, but it's not like a normal board game. It's like that little in-between where there's mm. other factions. I think that would be a great part of the market because full-on wargaming is not everyone's cup of tea. Most everyone does a board game. No, right? This is a good... This is designed as an introduction. Yeah. So, 
that that's you, my that's my two cents. I would love to I know see that it go some like people that. Do. I, I, I know that some people do, but I wouldn't recommend Drop Fleet Commander as somebody's first war game. Oh, it's absolutely too not. Absolutely not. I, I would probably say the same thing about Drop Zone. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that was my exclusive, literally from the lips of Louis himself. Well, from the t- from the keyboard of Louis himself. Yeah, I was gonna say, what are you, um, what are you doing with Louis' lips? He does know that I'm talking about this. I I literally in the chat last night. I was like, well, I assume I can only talk about what I know, and that all of this is to be kept quiet. And he was like, nope, I don't care, go for it. So yeah. Uh, I know that there is going to be some people that will be like, well, why are TT Combat on Kickstarter? And in this particular case, I'm not with you on that. This this is a product that deserves to be on Kickstarter. Um, there is risks involved with this, especially if they want to go plastics. That's very expensive. Yeah, that's that's so, all, uh, you know, like molds. Like, no... And when I say molds, uh, I'm talking like the high-quality polished molds that, yeah, it, those are not cheap. Yeah. Those are multi thousand dollars. So, um, anyways, next on the list we and got. And TT Combat are not on Kickstarter seven or eight times a year. It's yeah, it's not something they go on very frequently. Uh, the last time they were on was very early this year for their own paint line. So, mm-hmm. so, um, yep. Next on our list, uh, Kill Team, Striking Scorpions. Yeah, so we we got this taste recently. This is actually out for pre order now. Um, price in the UK is 80 pounds. I don't know what it's into the US. I don't know if you want to look that up or not. Uh, in Australia, it's 220. So that's why I put the reference that it's 80 dollars more than it should be. Um, but box set wise, like this is very, I want these striking scorpions. I don't really care about the scouts personally. Uh, I don't imagine that this is going to be one that you would struggle to get rid of the scouts because scouts are a staple. Everybody's going to want them. Uh, I'm trying um, to look it up. Oh, here we go. Uh, kill team. Uh, I'm fighting with their new uh, garbage tastic website. Let's see. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, but, 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 I am not seeing. I am not seeing anything. So for it's them. a more simple. There's like a couple of very small pieces of terrain, like almost pointless. But I mean, obviously they're there to help flesh out the box. Um, probably one of the easier box sets to split if you wanted to split this with a friend. Yeah. Uh, this is pretty much sold out everywhere in Australia right now. But it, it will you will get more. So, so I will... don't pay more than you should. For this. I will say this: the um, like the striping scorpions, the web spiders, like those parts of the Eldar army, I think are the best parts about the Eldar army. Well, I've made it public how much I want the striking scorpions. I will probably end up waiting until they release separately. Sure. Unless I can find someone that's like, well, I only want the scouts, and they're someone that's local. I just don't think it would be worth it. Yeah, for sure. Um, not for me. Well, I'm not saying it's not worth it for customers, but I only want something specific out of it, so there's no point me buying the whole thing. It also being the guy who found a Elder Army in his house, not remembering that I purchased this, and around the time of third, uh, fourth edition, uh, I'm loving the fact that these still look good, new and fresh, but they still look like the yeah. old ones. Like... It's it's one yeah, of those. Yeah, I like the fact that they haven't reinvented them. Well, yeah, and it's one of those minis where it's like they don't need to. They still look good. That classic. Yeah, they really do. It's. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I I don't have That's much. More, I don't have much more to say about them other than they they still just look good. So. Uh, Is next, that the last article? I think that might be the last article. Uh, no, we got uh, some Black Sight Studios. Oh, that's right. That's right. Uh, and we have uh, Sweet Sorry, Tooth. Sorry, we got a couple of box sets. Yep. So this is 
I mean, it's not necessarily Christmas themed, but to be fair, it's being released on Christmas because it's a Christmas themed box. They've done a lot of Halloween themed boxes, but they've never really done anything for the other holidays. So that's why we've got this one. Um, so this is, but it's a baker that um, has accidentally created like a biscuit monster. Uh, it's just, it, it's a lot of fun. Uh, there is another box that's released at the same time. We spoke recently that there was a Halloween themed box that was free. Yeah. So look at Sweet Tooth and Jacques the Baker. Yep. This immediately pops into my head. The animated series The Tick. There's the baking supervillain okay. with his sidekick, Buttery Pat, and he had like the 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 dinner roll bombs that would expand and like fill the building with dough. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> did, did, did you never see that? Um, I've, ne I've never <sighs> seen the, the cartoon of the tick. Yeah. I do know what it is. I've just never seen it. You, you have to watch it, Bruce. It is one of those, it is one of those things of, <laughs> it is so perfect. It, it's never um, the other one that's releasing beside this is the Thanksgiving one from a couple of months back where they gave it away digitally for free just as a thank you for waiting for the release but now that the books are on their way out i should have mine within the next month um they're putting it back up as an actual product which is what they always said they were going to do uh and then last but not least i believe is breacher which yes is covert missions in the near future breacher goes yep. lives in 19 days 13 hours 58 minutes and 46 seconds so we're looking at mid mid January for this back room to go live. Yep, yeah, about um, mid January. Blackside Studios do not do Kickstarter; they kind of do internal uh, Kickstarter. Pretty much, yeah. So it's a pre order system, uh, but it's a pre order system where, like, if it do if they don't get enough, it doesn't get produced. So right. it's kind of a similar idea, but they do it internally. And Kickstarter doesn't get ten percent or whatever. No, that's yeah. So there's definitely benefits to doing it this way. But there are more risks to doing it this way as well. Yep, for sure. Um, um, it says uh, two to four players, co-op slash head-to-head. -head, so uh, either way, depending on how you want to swing. Uh, our playtime. Yep. So, uh, the so this is written by the same guy that wrote Don't Look Back. Uh, this has actually been getting written for a about three or four years at this point. Uh, basically, the idea is is that this is a one versus many type scenario. So this is John Wick. It's an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. It's a John Claude Van Damme movie. You build your breacher um, to fit a certain theme, uh, and then your opponent, if you're doing it as opponents, would build their army to fit a certain theme and a certain mission uh, to go against. Um, and then they can kind of tweak it at the last at the last minute, depending on what mission it is that you roll up and stuff. That's a very simplified explanation, but the the that's idea a, of this really excites me. That's a great explanation. Blackside Studios, at this stage, I don't really feel they've they've stepped a foot wrong yet. I haven't. I don't own everything they've done, obviously. Um, but I'm yet to see anybody go and say, well, this was a little average. Like, yeah, Sega has a really big fan base. Don't Look Back has obviously been very popular. Um, Pit Lord's not out yet, so we can't really say too much about that. Um, but Demon Ship was really popular. Uh, Hametsu has been very well received. Uh, Don't Look Back is getting good reviews so far, but people are still only just getting it at this stage. So you're in pretty safe hands here. So... It, I mean, every company will eventually have something that doesn't go well. But. Yeah, and, and, and just based off of the, you know, the quality of the terrain that they're making, like, everything else could fall apart for them, but they could still run on that. You know, so... And, and, and I, I, I think, like, having the terrain and then be able to, like do something to go with it is just like that 
got to have kind of kind of kind of thing going. Um, you know, like I need this yeah. terrain's great, or ooh, this game sounds cool. Oh, and it comes with this terrain. I got to get it all. So, as long as they continue to yep. do one thing good, they're going to be able to do the other part and, and get that as well. So, yeah, the, they come from the hobby. Now, granted. Most of these companies come from the hobby, but like specifically, they are essentially us that went into business for themselves. Um, so they kind of like they have an idea of what most gamers want. They also listen to their community a lot. Um, I mean, they are a business first and foremost, but yeah, they 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 take the time and they don't seem to try and rush things too much. Yeah, yeah, it, it seems like you know they maybe they they do one thing a year. It seems like. Yeah. The downside of the company up until a few months back had always been their retail presence because their retail presence they had struggled with because it was anybody that runs a business will know like getting into retail is kind of difficult and you need to have the right distribution and you need to make it easy but you also need to kind of you know make money. Um yep. So that's the that's the thing that they've been trying to fix over the last 12 months. Um, and it's going to be interesting to see how that continues to go. I, I know that our sponsor does have stuff from them now, or is about to receive it, but I, I believe they should have it by now. Um, how it's selling on the shelves, I don't know, because I haven't actually asked. Right. But even if I did know, I could probably couldn't say anyway. So, and then we got... Um, is that the last thing I linked? We got one last thing, and that's uh, Sarissa Precision. Oh, that's right. They're doing a galleon. <laughs> and this is really pretty. Yeah, so let me go so ahead. This is a this is a pirate ship or, or a, a naval vessel. Uh, all of the layers of this boat comes apart. I want to say it's four layers, not including the mast. Uh, the images I've got pulled up are not showing really. Uh, well, let's see here. So you got the how the... One, two. I would say three for sure. Okay, maybe it's three then. Maybe four. You, um, you, I, I just think this looks really pretty, and it's not actually that expensive. Um, I've got a picture of the cannon, so that looks interesting because it looks like it's a two-part pewter cannon for the barrel, and then like MDF for the actual cannon mount. Yeah, that would make sense. So, um, but yeah, this, I mean, you can't make a cannon out of MD. It's a pain, and it doesn't look very good. Yeah. Uh, let's be honest. Pewter technology is, you know, the oldest part about this hobby. And if you can't do a pewter cast, that's like cheap and easy. <laughs> um, it would be it would be white metal, not specifically pewter, though. Six of one half times the other. I know, um, but now people can't have a go at you in the comments about saying the wrong thing. Whatever. Um, Ninety-five dollars uh, without guns, with guns, hundred and seven. Yep. Which is fine, honestly. Um, it's uh, I mean, if you if you were going to buy, it, you'd want you'd want to buy the guns. I, I would, unless you already have a ton in the right scale. I don't see why yeah. you wouldn't. For a matter of six bucks. Uh, a little more than that, ninety five. Uh, yeah, so I mean, it's no, uh, fifteen, sixteen. No, yeah, sixteen. Oh, bucks. I must have misheard you. Then. But but still, ninety five to one hundred seven. So I can't math. Um, it's eleven. Eleven. Yes, ninety five. No, it's twelve. On this night, this episode of Game Table, watch a struggle at simple arithmetic. <laughs> I don't know what All you're right. saying. <laughs> and I'm in school. So, arithmetic is math. Uh, what, what, do you, what do you think of the pirate ship, Sam? Why don't I get this bigger so you can see it easier? There we go. What do you think of that? I like it. And this is... Oh, hey, here we go. I just found the images of the, the different levels. So here we have the bottom cargo hold. 
Uh, here's the next level up. This would be like your uh, your crew type quarters, uh, just below the main deck. And so I would argue then, yeah. like your third level is, I don't know if is it showing up on this. It's not um, right above that. So that would be like your uh, captain's quarters and the main deck. And then you have That's like crazy. the uh, the I guess the flying deck or whatever, where the actual like you know you pilot the boat or the ship. Depending the on poop deck. no, the poop deck is where you poop, and that's right here. It's on the back of the boat. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm gonna say this now. This is totally American stereotype. But I feel like every American is gonna get the one with gum. Well, I mean, it's it's a naval thing, Sam. You know, back back in the day, yeah. if a, if a ship did not have cannons, it could not defend itself. And and you're fast forward to modern times. You got all these cargo ships. They don't have guns on them. And what's happening? They're getting attacked by pirates. That's that's still an actual thing that's happening. You know these days. So you know it, it, it is a the reality. You wouldn't it. But it's it's a matter of twelve twelve bucks difference. So the only reason you wouldn't buy it is if you already had that many cannons that you're falling over them. Which I really don't see like having that many cannons, you know, like, okay, maybe you have dwarves from Warhammer and then you've got cannons. Do you know what? You can never have enough cannons, especially with the fact that, uh, let me click on this one. So there's, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six cannons on one side on mm -hmm. one deck. So that's 12 for both sides. Then let's go to the second deck. You got another 12 that's cannons. That's a steal. You know, like, so if you get as many cannons are pictured, you're getting at least 24 cannons for 12 bucks. That's 50 cents a cannon. Yeah, that's just nuts. That it, buy the full thing. So. It's like seriously, because the other the other side of that argument is that there's the chance that the ones that you have already won't fit. Right. Yeah. For sure. In which case, then you're going to have to order them separately and pay for postage again. Uh, no, anyway, great, great lucky ship. Is, yeah, great lucky ship for the price. But yeah, let's uh, go ahead and move on to this. In the definition, independent type slang word jargon. George is not paying attention. Yes, I am. No, it says skipping. <laughs> oh, we're skipping. That's what it says. Oh, we are skipping. All right, let me go ahead. Go switch back to this. Uh, and then do this. You got nothing. You got something else to add, man. Green, blue, crying, pain. Bruce, what hobby have you done in the plane in the last twenty-four hours? <laughs> well, I sat around for twelve hours waiting for my plane. That was that was extremely exciting. Um, so yes, for those of you that are trying to figure out where I am, I'm at my mother's, which is where I was. Last time we did a recording for Christmas, um, which, which, by the way, I will say your backdrop is absolutely amazing. Yeah, there is a reason I sat here. Um, so hobby wise, my actual physical hobby, I haven't done a lot of. Uh, I've been putting more ga more time into the game again. I did another massive edit and clean sweep of a whole heap of things that weren't worded properly, or I wanted to update. Um, I've gone through and rewritten the collision rules because, I mean, literally the rules said that I need to come back and look at this because they're not finished. Um, so I have actually gone through that. It's still not finished, but it, it, it it's, it, it's coming along. Um, otherwise, I've done a few things for Toy Reel. Um... Hobby-wise, though, I haven't really had the chance to do a lot. What about yourself, George? Um, about, about the same boat. Uh, I, I did follow some uh, some advice of JP, and I got some silicon mounts for my uh, 3D printer for the uh, level yep. bed. And I'm currently in the process of printing a, an egg holder. An egg holder? Yes. As in, literally, it's something that holds eggs in the fridge. Yes, yeah. 
Well, not on the fridge, on the counter. We, we I, I don't know if you know this, Bruce. Um, Casey has quail. We have a rooster and seven hens. And the hens... Oh, amazing. And, okay. and, 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 and the, the, the hens pop out an egg a day, so... Um, we need we need somewhere to put the yep. eggs. Um, it's Lou Big and the girls the girls from the song because there, there's seven girls he lists in the refrain. Um, okay. What about yourself, Sam? Have you been doing any hobby? Playing more of the Forbidden game. Yeah. What, what what did I get you for Christmas that you already opened? Forbidden Jungle. But you're not allowed to open it before Christmas. Uh, we suck at Christmas here, so and it's a game. So oh, wait, wait, wait till Christmas to open it and play it when we can open it early and play it more. Uh, yeah. So I, I did pick up. Uh, oh, right. no, it's, it's not. It's not that he wanted to open it early. It's that you bought something for yourself, so you made him open it so that you can play with it. I got my mom a winter <laughs> coat, and she, I gave it to her. And I said, "It's a coat. Open it. Use it now because it's winter." Uh, I got Casey a, I a, a treat dispenser for her pups, so she's already got that. I got her a remote start for her car last year, and we put that in the beginning of December. Like you know, it's like whatever. So uh, we got him. I got him Forbidden Jungle, which falls along the series of Forbidden Island, Forbidden Desert, Forbidden Sky, and Forbidden Temple. Uh, so it's right. it is a uh, yep, cooperative um, uh, you versus the game uh, board game type thing. Uh, Matt Leacock, he's you probably know Pandemic. He did uh, Pandemic. Well, you spoke about the other two as as one of your favorite games. Yes, yeah. In our top ten, yeah, a couple of years back. So and like so, I got him for Battle Juggle because he enjoys them as well. And mm -hmm. th this is a great game. It's um, it's got a lot of moving parts, and you have to think even more, and. Matt Leacock is just an absolute brilliant designer of making an AI that will just beat the pants off of you. Can I say something? Yeah, go for it. The pilot yeah. of Forbidden Island is stupidly overpowered. Because he can go anywhere on on the map for one action. That's yeah. Well and they all have their special okay. abilities. Uh which one did I play as Sam the chemist? Navigator. He can go like this. Yeah, you can usually only go up, down, left, right. The navigator can just whatever direction. Um, I'm trying to remember which we played a game, and I'm trying to remember which diver. one I play. The what? I play as diver. No, no, in jungle. You play as the navigator again. No, uh, I played as the chemist or something like that. You were the biologist. Yeah, so the chemist can actually take damage. Like you know, the characters you play as, they can. There's there's insects running around. They can sting you, and you take damage. But not the chemist. He doesn't take okay. damage. So it's yeah. There's all sorts of crazy things about this. Um, if anyone's into board games, I highly recommend the Forbidden series by Matt Leacock for for sure. Yeah. They are really good. It's the kind of things where you know. I'm it, I'm trying to remember a conversation from two years ago, but I'm fairly sure that the comment you were making about it at the time was that everybody had their own ability that made them broken. Yep. But because everybody was broken, nobody was broken. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and so it's, yeah. And, and of course, as you're playing, you're, the game board is shrinking and you're running out of space and you're trying to accomplish a task. And as... Oh, so it's Fortnite. Well, and as it goes along, like, you know, all the, uh, the, the bad things that happen... You, know, you draw two cards in the turn, like, this happens and this happens, right? If it happens too many times, then you're drawing three, then you're drawing four, and things are happening faster and faster, and super stressful. Yeah. They're fun. <laughs> um, Sounds good. I don't think I've been doing much else. I I want to try to get in a, uh, a, a game of Season 2 uh, Cthulhu uh, tomorrow with Sam. Yeah. We actually yep. killed Cthulhu. Yeah, we, we've... We've killed every nice. elder. Yeah, we've killed every elder god. But I also read too that uh, except for Dagon. Yeah, well, Dagon's uh, extremely hard. We were we were going off of like we set up the scenario, and that's how we were playing it. Turns out, if you already have all the pieces in play, and something else happens, you go to the box and you pull out of the box and keep adding stuff. 
as part of like, oh, this is actually a lot harder. <laughs> and this is where I turn around and say, have you seen the yellow sign? Uh, that's actually one of the... Uh, and if you know what that is, then you know what it is. And if you don't, then you don't. Yeah, that's actually one of the uh, the gods that comes in the uh, core box is the yellow king. Yoda. Nice. So. I think it was the first one, actually. Yeah, so uh, that's been that's been the hobby. Not a lot going on. Um, we, we, we spent a lot of time... It's, it's that time of year. Yeah, well, baking cookies. I think we did 156 cookies uh, Thursday. Where's my cookies? Uh, they'd probably be stale by the time they arrive to you. Probably. <laughs> Another hobby. All right, man. Let's get this one. It's uh, Video Games Colorado. Game Talk. Talk nerdy to me. Biggest surprise of 2023, Bruce. Um, so yeah, I kind of just kind of threw like a couple of random questions out because it's like it's the end of year and it's like, well, we're not doing like a proper end of year thing, but this kind of is. So, well, let's just talk about that as a general discussion. Um, these don't have to be in any particular order. It's whatever you like. If you have something on that list, you're like, well, I actually have an answer for this. Go to it. Give yourself sure. time to think of the other ones. As far as surprises of the year is concerned, for me, it's probably. It probably has to be Epic or Legion Imperialis because, I mean, I'm on record as saying that I just didn't think that was ever going to happen. Like, legit, I legitimately never thought it would sure. happen because I just didn't think they were interested in doing it. Um, and here it is, and it's sold seemingly really well. Um, I, I don't know how long it's going to sell for and how long it will get played for. Uh, I know that there's a really hardcore audience out there for it. There has been an audience screaming for this for years. Yeah. I'm just not that audience, so I don't really know. Um, I've got two big surprises for uh, 2023. You mean 2024? Mm -hmm. No, no, the year that's happened. So, no. so two, two big surprises. Uh, the first one, which is probably the most important one for me because it is still my number one favorite game, is... Uh, more uh, Cthulhu Death May Die from Simon. Yeah. I, I was not expecting that. Um, I should have been shocked by it, but I saw it and I was just like, ooh, yes. Be I mean, it is still my favorite game. You know, it ticks all my boxes. Yeah. The intellectual property is great. It's just, it, in my opinion, it's such a great game. Um, my other yeah. biggest surprise, and this, this is coming out of the woodwork, uh, how Redgrass thought they can like manufacture and justify the price of two hundred eighty dollars for a stupid light? That shocked the yeah. hell out of me. I I I it's done funded, though. I people and fans of Games Workshop stuff still fork out hundreds of dollars for stuff that's you know, especially in Australia even. I I. I've yeah. been working on plans for you know upgrading this bench behind me, and one of the things I've been looking at is lighting, and I have found a source of lighting. At CRI is in the nineties. It's not ninety seven. Ooh, but you know what? Ninety seven CRI is junk unless you are making pigments, which ninety nine percent of the hobby is not making pigments, and you don't need to spend two hundred eighty dollars on a light like that. Yeah. I mean, look, people are going to have it, and I'm sure people are raving out. Oh, I'm a fan of Red Grass Gaming, but I don't disagree with you. Yeah. Um, no, they're, they're, their early wet palette on, is like, phenomenal. When we both got our wet palette, yeah. like, when we both got our wet palette, we saw that there, and you were like, hmm, this looks like they're trying to make it expensive. Uh, and I was like, well, I'm, not, I'm kind of excited for it. I'll probably back it. But yeah. then I saw the price of it, and I was like, yeah, no, they're not getting my money. Yeah, because I was just I found the price of it offensive. Yeah, I mean two two hundred eighty dollars and oh yeah, it's got two independent lights, so you don't have shadow. My setup is going to have five light bars, so I will not have shadow. Yeah. I will have more lumens. I will have almost as high as CRI for half the price. Mm -hmm. Remind me, George, what else is on that list? What? 
the list of all oh, right. Uh, biggest hobby mistake of 2023. Yep, and I think one of them is like my favorite thing of the year. I'm just I'm trying to remember what else I put uh, on the list. Biggest hobby mistake, biggest hobby, uh, hobby mistake, biggest hobby, hobby achievement, and most disappointing news. Okay. Yep. I I, I, um, I just read disappointing news. I already have the answer, and I'm going to save it because yeah, and I I'm pretty sure I know what it is because <laughs> if you didn't mention it, I was going to right. Um, um my mistake, hobby disappointment or hobby mistake. Yeah. Uh, so uh, my biggest hobby mistake of 2023 was probably my uh, Cobra Go. Um, yes, I probably need it as a intro starting 3D printer, but it was just so frustrating with the bed failing. There's no actual way to manually level the bed. It is what it is, and if it doesn't work, it's it's junk at that point. So, yes, I'm still feeling fighting with getting the level dialed in on my Ender, but it's it's working good as it is. So, mm -hmm. um, for me. More than anything else, it's probably been my impulse purchases. Um, there's a and, and I spoke about this about three months ago, roughly. When I like, I'd had a bit of a revelation as to why I've been having so many problems with that. Because uh, I bought a whole heap of things and I kept on using the podcast as, as my excuse to buy right, things. Yeah. And there's a whole heap of stuff that I've just like I've opened and never touched. So that's probably the big one, mistake wise, for me. Um, and I believe the next one was Hobby Achievement. Yes. So mine's probably fairly obvious, so I want to go to you. So mine's less obvious, but still nonetheless, I think it's really awesome, and I have to pull up our channel, not my account. Um, right. Switch accounts. Oh, I have, to, I have to go to a different Google tab. Hang on one second. Uh, oh, no. Where did it go? I can't open uh, a getting table page. Where did getting table go for for me on Google? That's not cool. Um, How about I'm talking about mine while we figure it out then? Yeah, go go for it. So for me, hobby achievements wise, the big one for me has obviously been Entropy City. Um, but it's still in progress and i'm kind of like I'll, i've taken a bit of a break from it recently because there was a lot that was going on with that for a while but i i hang on i'm getting asked if i want to let you sign in no oh, no nope. yep, that was me <laughs> am i signing in yes it's me prompt expired got it i'm in okay it must have sent the same thing to me as it did to you yeah, on the you, event. Well, before we I... have both of our phones set up for the, the podcast account, so. Yeah. All right. So the, the, the obvious one for me is Entropy City. This is something that I started last year uh, and didn't really stop until the end of October or mid-October. It's kind of the point where I was like, no, I need to take a break because I was kind of getting to the point of where I needed to take a break and kind of re reassess reassess type thing but not only had i done some play testing with friends and stuff which i had already been doing but i actually openly showed it off at two events um only one of which i'd really prepared for uh the other one kind of happened very last minute and was insanely stressful because of that uh but for me that's got to have been that like as far as the achievements is concerned that's got to have been the big one for me oh absolutely yeah i I, I don't think of anything that you could you could top that with. Uh, so now that I have it up and I can actually uh, spout the numbers, uh, mine is, is, is kind of a... It, it's a little personal victory, but it's also a victory for the channel as well. So obviously as far as content creation goes for, for some of the videos, you know, you, you've done way more than I have. You've got it nailed down way more than I do. But for some reason... Okay. The, the the one video we have that I did that people have just, they keep tuning into, is me covering the uh, Witcher Old World expansions for the board game. 
Yeah, and more so than the other ones too. Like by far. Because you unboxed all of that, but that one video has done so much better than the rest of them. And it's just it's done so much better than everything else. Uh, right behind that is your review of the one point five rulebook for Drop Fleet by yeah which has been slowly that, that's been a that's kind of been a slow burn that one uh which you know like 800 you know views less just for this you know the same time frame well no that's from 2022 never mind so i was going to say our uh our red grass thing but uh for the the palette you know that's a thousand views behind it but never mind that's a year older even so so for me yeah. that was a little like that's a personal accomplishment of what did I do on that video? I need to go watch that a few times. Like, it just keep doing. Sometimes my... you just get lucky. Sometimes you just get lucky. Um, but for me, that's a that's a personal achievement right there. Of I did that, and several people have tuned into that. Yeah. Now, Sox is obviously not here, but I kind of want to answer this on his behalf. But this is my opinion, not Sox's opinion. Um, but. The very first video that he recorded. Oh, absolutely. I barely I barely had to edit that at all. I have to edit my own work more than I had to edit either of his. Like, it was pretty much just right to go. And it's not because he... Well, as far as I know, he didn't sit there and, like, redo it again and again and again and again and again. Um, like, his style is certainly a little bit different than mine and yours, but then yours and mine are different too. But... I, I gotta say that is something that was very impressive because getting the, getting somebody's first video uh, and not having to do while editing was a delight. Yeah, well, it just the first video after and and I apologize for the socks, but after kind of you know like nudging aggressively of record it. <laughs> Uh, it, it turned out absolutely phenomenal, in my opinion. Yeah. So. And he did another one off his back without even being asked. Yep. Uh, I think I think I could be wrong. Again, I'm speaking on his behalf again, but I think the big thing for him was that because he'd never done it, there was part of him that was like kind of scared to do it. Oh, for sure. Um. Let, let, let's talk, um, let's talk about that one video that for the longest time and it was just absolute garbage that I did. <laughs> oh, the vibrating, the, the 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 paint shaker one. Uh, no, not the paint shaker one. The uh, the one assembly video I was doing. Oh, the one that you never finished. Yeah, that one. Because I just I didn't like how it was working, so I completely revamped the setup. So. Yep. And still never finished it. Um, most disappointing news of 2023. Bruce, talk about something that's not mine because you know what mine is. Um, mine's probably the same, honestly. Okay, so on the I count, on the count of three, then. I really wanted this. I really wanted us to be wrong about this. On the count of three. Um, one. one of my predictions about that is wrong, so but I'm going to talk about that later. So, on the count of three, one, two, three, Mythic Games. Mythic Games. Uh, mythic Games, sorry, yes. Um, right now, yeah. they're currently right now, they're doing a, uh, it's a, it's an advent calendar. But they're yep. they're basing it off of Krampus, and this is probably the the worst received form of marketing I have ever seen for a game. The spam coming from their emails, um, the the way that they present themselves online, it's just an insult. Honestly, all of it is an insult, uh, and to the point where people that wouldn't know, like I fought really hard to avoid talking about Mantic outside of our... Mythic. Like, when we were talking about it. By Mythic, sorry. Mantic are wonderful. I have nothing negative to say about Mantic. This is why I'm correcting um, you. <laughs> yes. Um, but somebody recently on the Discord for on Tabletop pointed out, like, how 
that like how poorly that was being received and i kind of went i fought so hard and so long to avoid talking about this here but this is so much worse than you think it is and i just went for it and just laid it all out on the discord yeah and a, a lot of them knew some of them didn't um some of them knew did, but didn't realize just how bad it is um like make no mistake there is Zero question at this point that they are just simply ripping people off and lying to cover it. There is no way that they can prove that wrong at this stage. They have had opportunities to prove that they were doing the right thing. I mean, it looks like Siege is getting close. Uh, it is in production. Maybe. The next stage for it is to ship. Yeah. So the next problem with that is, is then they still have... Excuse me. Wave 2 of Darkest Dungeon that that still needs to get manufactured and shipped. So, um... Yep. They they did the, uh... We need more money, please. Yeah. Uh, which they're going to be doing for all of them. Because they're basically... Yeah. Well, so here's the thing now. Uh, language packs for Darkest Dungeon are not being done now. Because yep. they did get the minimum order quantity on that. So... If you're, say, German and order Darkest Dungeon, you're not getting it in uh, your native language. You get a PDF, and it's an English game. So that's a huge, yep. huge issue there, in my opinion, because they said this is going to happen. Now it's not. So yeah. So then we still have... Now, granted, there is kind of Kickstarter where, look, a, pro a, a, a product could change. That is kind of the, the the risks that you take but at the same time if you point blank promise something and then just point blank refuse to do it which well, is what they've done it's, well, it's not good to go to your Simon argument of at one point when mythic was actually still on track with things and still doing things when they said they were going to do it they were too big to be on kickstarter they've mismanaged themselves horribly but yeah if they said they were going to do a game in german that should be done in german um so they, they did, yeah. they, they, did. But they have they have mismanaged their funds they've clearly spent things on things that they shouldn't have yep. we have no way of knowing what that was but clearly a lot of that money has disappeared yep so um, darkest dungeon uh the wave two funding has happened so that is going to get produced and shipped in theory yeah we're i'm going to say in theory and then it actually happens else. then you still have monster apocalypse you still have yep. Rise of the Necromancer. Just their, which isn't just their property. What? That also partially belongs to somebody else. Uh, yeah, that still belongs to Privateer Press So, uh, as well. Yeah. So there's Monster Apocalypse, there's Rise of the Necromancer, there's, uh, is it pronounced Anastair? Anastir? Something like that. And then Hell of the Last Saga. So they still have four outstanding projects that need delivery. Yeah. So the prediction I spoke of earlier, this time last year, I made the prediction that they would be out of business before the end of this year. That's very clearly not going to be the case now. Uh, I, I, I'm going to I'm I'm cut I, you I some slack I don't think I can sit here and say that it's a good thing because they're still lying to people with yeah. pretty much every post they make. I, I, I'm going to cut you some slack on that because I still have the belief of it's not a if, it's when. Yeah. So, uh, I don't think I'm going to get Hell of the Last Saga just because we have Monster Apocalypse. I don't think we will We still have Monster Apocalypse, which, you know... Which will get priority because it's a license. Because there's the third-party uh, privateer press with that intellectual. Um, th they say that they're going to give us a big update on Hell. Um but they've been saying that since May. But the beginning of the year, for every single game, they said they're going to do an update monthly. Every game except for Hell has not had an update. Well, Siege 6 and Darkest Dungeon, because they're in production. Every single game has not had an update since January. Hell had an update in March, and that's the last we've heard on that. So, um, still not yep. going to hold my breath. Um, I just realized... Uh, Sam, what was your biggest surprise of the year with with all the stuff I've shown you? Probably Forbidden Jungle. Forbidden Jungle. 
I thought he was done with the series. So, yeah, it was. I, I want to say in November, I sent him a couple of screenshots. I was like, "Hey, check this out." And he's like, "Oh, cool." And then, t- to his his level of surprise, when he opened, and he was just like, "Oh, hey, you got me the game you showed me." Like, <laughs> so. Uh, I, I, yeah, I wonder where he tried to take. Right. Um, yeah. What, what, what do you think's been your biggest achievement, Sam? Probably passing all my finals. No, I'm talking about for the hobby stuff. Um, yes, passing your finals is good. Uh, <laughs> it is very good, yes. I wouldn't call it a hobby. But to be fair, George didn't ask hobby. That's true. I, I, I'm going to show you one, Sam. Um, where is it at? We're going to do this in order of by date. Where, when did we do that? I don't know. Let's play. The Let's Play is a good one. I, I, I think that's a pretty good one. Oh, right there. Let's play Stranger Things on uh, no, in November. Because... Uh, You you because he's got, never done it. Well, yeah, you've never done anything like that except for the unboxing, which also I think that's a, a, a good achievement for you as well. The, the the same category of socks of, I pretty much shoved you in front of my equipment and said, "Do this." <laughs> and what I think we should do yeah. for next Let's Play series would be the Forbidden Game. It deserves that attention. I I could see us doing that. So maybe I'll show people why the pilot is so powerful. <laughs> so, um, I don't. I, All right. I think it's been a pretty good year. Uh, that being said, uh, we'll definitely need to get some more input on socks because do we? Uh, we yeah. don't have another session before the year is over, or is it? No, but you can do it in January. That's fine. Yeah, this is the last video of the year. No, yeah, this is our last video of the year. Yeah, yeah. so. And it will by yes, because, yeah. Time, time flipping flies, holy cow. The last video, actually, the last video of the year, because this won't go live until Thursday, will be this, because the Christmas Day reel will be before then. Yeah, so. Uh, I think the last one is um, most exciting news, or it was something along those lines. Uh, I have a question at the end that I want to add. There's surprise, hobby mistake, achievement, and most disappointing news. Which we just finished. Yes. So, what about... So, could we cover exciting news? What what would you say is your purchase of the year? Or or item that you received of the year? Mm. It's obviously allowing for Kickstarters. Um... Um, or do you want to do a top three? No, I'm trying to think of. Uh, let me see here. Well, I have one that I can talk of. Yeah, and it kind of it's a little bit. There's a little bit of a crossover because this is also one that really surprised me, and this was the Blood and Plunder two player starter set. This is something I backed on Kickstarter. And then after that finished and it was done, a few months later I was kind of sitting there like, I don't really know why I've done this. And I was expecting to kind of, like, receive it and go, no, I don't really know if I need this. But I got, like, opening that box really reinvigorated me again. I still haven't built the stuff in it. I know I should. But that box set was so much better. I knew what was going to be in it, but just getting it and seeing it in person was so much better than I was expecting it to be. Um, I genuinely think it's the player, it's the two-player starter set in the industry right now. Regardless of whether you buy it just for yourself or whether you're splitting it with a friend, it's been done perfectly. Uh, 
Uh, the other one for me is probably the... Um, um, I ordered some terrain from Black Sight Studios through a redirection service. Uh, that's how I could afford to get it in. Uh, there's a video that I'm going to be doing on that early next year. Um, I think I've got some genuine good advice to give to Australians on this fact. Um, after my eight months research on the subject. Um, but the um, mobile homes that they did are just gorgeous. I mean, yeah. the Sarissa Precision one was nice too, but the Black Sight Studio ones are another level up. But it sounds like you're just still not sure. I'm still trying to... Probably my unspeakable box. For, okay. for a Cthulhu Death May Die. Um, yep. j Is that the one you spent too much money on? Well, at the time, I'm going to say I didn't spend too much money on it because that was the Kickstarter exclusive, not for retail box of items. Yep. And, and so... It was either get it at that price or continually keep watching it go up in price and either never get it or continue to like or just spend even more. And at that point, I don't believe that even hinted that there was a second no. one that was going to happen. So. No, because so I got that. And then I want to say it was a couple months later, Simon's like, here's the new Cthulhu game we're releasing. You know, to Kickstarter, yeah. which is essentially seasons three and four, and it wasn't till a week into the campaign that they're like, "We're going to re-release this as an add-on for this Kickstarter." So at yeah. that point, it had been like four months of I had had this, I had looked at it, and I was excited of I got this. You know, I've got this percentage of this game now. I feel very yeah. content. And then that happened, yeah. and it was just like, oh, well, damn. But but because of that Kickstarter, I was able. To, I'm I'm getting the the bigoter, the the 18 inch Cthulhu. I'm getting that without having to pay the Cheap ridiculous money. price that I was, might have had to. So yeah. So there is a silver lining to that. Yes, I paid. So I think... Go ahead. Yeah. No, no, you finish what you're because I was going to say I think that's it for game talk. But yeah, finish I, what you're saying. I think so too. Yeah. So you know, yes, I did pay a lot for this, but I still got it. Didn't know yep. that was going to happen. So six of one, half a dozen the other. I was able to complete with the big one without having to pay that exorbitant price. So I, I Sam, can't, I can't complain. Um. Of the hobby-related stuff that you've received this year, is there, like, one that surprised you more than the others or one that really stands out? Not really. Wh which one was your favorite game you got this year? Probably Forbidden Jungle. Even more than Stranger Things? Are you, are you that much of a fan of the series? Hmm. I can I say something about Spiegel? What? Can I say something about Unspeakable? Sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, one of the players is Albert Einstein. That's true, yeah. In the, the uh, Unspeakable no. So So that's that's one thing. And there's so many things it's like they could do. So like Zombicide, like if you look, there's like the, the John Goodman character from um, Big Lebowski. You know, like all nice. the pop culture characters. So Death May Die, they do a lot of like in the core box, there's Lindsay Borden. And Rasputin. Yeah, there's Rasputin. So, yeah, and there's Albert Einstein. So, like, there's been a lot of fan creations. Like, I don't know why Simon hasn't done it, but there's no HP Lovecraft character that you can play as. And Interesting. I like yeah, that I... they give them all their backstory. Like, they gave us a reason why Rasputin's a yeah. immortal. So, one of, the, one of the fan creations that people have done is, you know, they've made a Batman because... 
you're an investigator. Who's the greatest investigator ever? Yeah. The oh, Batman. It's... So, no, it's... Okay, you're not wrong there, Sam. Sherlock Holmes is a good investigator. I'll give you that. To be fair, it was one of the inspirations for Batman. Th that, that too, yeah. So, uh, Sam gets credit for that. Um, upcoming events? I think yep. that would be a great fan care. Well, Sherlock Holmes? Yeah, for sure. Tournaments, demos, conventions, you know, that kind of stuff. So I'm going to do a lot of talking here because Bruce can't see anything. Uh, we got the Melbourne Figure Painters Collective last Sunday of each month, and the Kathleen. It's Sp already happened this month, huh? It's so yeah. You, you got to wait till next year. Uh, last Sunday of the month, Kathleen Smee Library. Am I saying that correctly? Sign. Sign. Uh, that's a two five one Faraday Street in Carlton from twelve to five p.m. Uh, the Instagram is Instagram.com slash MFP dot collective. Did we have the Danger Close Drop Zone Commander Tournament that is coming out the 20th of January in 2024? It is 17, 1,750 points. That is the Bristol Gaming Collective. The website is www.everbright.com. And then the last thing on our list is the Drop Fleet Commander Space Tournament Comp. Space Station Competition. Uh, yep. It is, there's two parts to it. Uh, build for yep. the competition. So you need to enter before the end of the year with a photo of the sprue and or the bits you'll use and have it built and painted by the 31st of January 2024. Yep. The a word on that. Somebody asked this recently. You are allowed to scratch build one, but it needs to include drop universe parts. And then the second part of that, the painting, painting competition, if you already have a space station built and painted, you need to enter a photo of your finished work in the thread before the end of the year. So if you've yep. already done this, you have till the 31st of December to submit your photo. If you're building and painting, you have till the end of January next year. Uh, prize support by TT Combat. And you are encouraged to post your progress on the group. Yeah, I would. I I'd definitely recommend people to get involved in this. Like, if you have those kits sitting around, which to be fair, quite a few of us do, um, then okay. it's a good excuse to build something fun and silly, and just or, or paint something up fun or silly, and just get involved. For sure. Um, why not? And, and t to be fair. The Drop Universe, like Drop Fleet Commander, needs the attention right now. If you're if you're a fan of the game, it needs more attention. So give it some. Uh, I am not entering the competition because I am busy with other things, uh, and also I, I mean, I could build something and stand beside it, but I, I didn't think that me entering would be appropriate. I also don't know where my space station kit is. And that's it. Thank uh, you to those that support us. We do appreciate your support. Uh, if you enjoy what we do, please consider sponsor. Uh, please do consider supporting us. You can find us at patreon.com slash getting tabled. Um, speaking of people that support us, thank you to Valhalla Hobby. They have been sponsoring us all year. Uh, it's literally the only reason why we can afford to have Drop Fleet Commander. Uh, uh, yeah. Why well, we can have GettingTabled.com. Um, they have been wonderful this year. But they have all of your hobby stuff. They're in Verona, Wisconsin. Uh, they have a real, a real passion for the niche side of this hobby, which is something that we all need to see more of. Um, get involved. Order something online. Their prices are really good, honestly. Just... If you use the code GT2305 at checkout, you get 5% off. Um, if you want to follow us on social media, facebook.com slash getting tabled is the, the best one to follow. It is the most active. Uh, you will have posts there every week, every time a video goes live, every time something's coming up. If there's something that's really exciting news or really urgent news that you need to know that can't wait for a podcast, that's where we'll share it. Um, it's the place to be. At Getting Tabled on Instagram and Twitter. 
It's not X. It's Twitter. Um, and getting tabled at gmail.com. Reach out. Let us know what you want us to cover. Uh, if there's stuff that we're not doing that you think we should be doing, let us know. If there's stuff that we do do that you really appreciate, hey, maybe let us know. If you have an event that's coming up, let us know. Just let us know about things, anything. You said do. Um, no, true. <laughs> uh, you can also find me on Toy Reel, youtube.com slash Toy Reel. Uh, we have an episode coming up live Wednesday night where we will all be talking about our top three figures of the year. Um, so that will be happening at around 7.30 Australian time. Well, Eastern Australian time. Um, so come along to that if you're awake for it. Um, it should be, especially if you're somebody that actually has an interest. If you're not awake at that hour, then you will be able to watch it after the fact, JP. Um, <laughs> JP should watch it. JP just says, Sherlock Holmes. Yeah, I think it was responding <laughs> to you there, there Sam. Yeah. <laughs> so. And I think that's it. Merry Christmas, Bruce. Merry Christmas. And until next year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For listening to Getting Table. Music used in this podcast was created by Eric Mataris at SoundImage.org. Play more games. Fucking hell. Mm. So I need to find out why this wouldn't work. Because this does work. I tested it.